The Israel Museum is one of the most prestigious institutes in Israel and abroad, with thousands of items on display, dating from the prehistoric era to the modern day. But how are all these precious artifacts protected and preserved? The Israel Museum in Jerusalem has the largest and um, oldest conservation department in Israel. It was established in 1963, two years before the museum um, was open to the public. We have almost 20 conservators working in different material uh, specialities. Um, and we're a small, vibrant community. And we work together with the curators in order to preserve and conserve the collections of the Israel Museum. I-24 News had a rare chance to visit some of the museum's conservation labs. Located in the side wing of the museum, the complex consists of several rooms of different sizes, each dedicated to a different type of item, categorized mainly by material. The main lab is the Organic Objects Conservation Lab. Here we can see preservation work of objects like clay vessels, or this impressive mosaic. This mosaic was here in display in the late 1970s. It has old casting which didn't fit the modern exhibitions. So we're working on it to put it back on display. We're trying to improve its overall appearance. We're now working on the bottom of the mosaic and trying to complete the missing parts which we know we can complete. The Paper Conservation Lab is dedicated to ancient and new items which showcase inscriptions, paintings and texts. Working in this lab requires a high level of care and patience since the materials may be very delicate and sensitive. For example, this ancient prayer book of the Neve Shalom Jewish community in Suriname dating back to the 18th century CE. We're starting to do uh, XRF uh, research about the, the, the colors in the columns here. And we noticed that there is a modern color uh, like in 20th century, not in the, in the same period of the, of the manuscript. And we, we noticed also a lot of uh, old repairs, like from parchment uh, and uh, other uh, repairs that also getting damaged. Also, it's not the same format, this book. It was cut, like, in, I don't know in which time, but we can estimate, like, in the, in the, in the time of treatment, they cut the edge because it was very, very fragile, and uh, they, they didn't repair it. Our next stop is the textile conservation lab, where we can see different fabrics and artworks. Conservator Jona Dresner shows us a lavish silk coat from the early 20th century. This uh, coat was exhibited at the museum for six months and now it was replaced with another coat that we have uh, because we don't want to display delicate and um, sensitive textiles to too much light, which really harms the dyes and the fibers themselves. This is made of silk, and silk is very sensitive to light. So we, we do a kind of rotation with these two coats, and the coat came back for our lab to have a little work done on it. It's a little torn, but it will be okay. We're gonna stabilize it with a lot of nylon net. The conservators are using advanced techniques such as scans and 3D printers. But what seems like a technical job has many challenges. In Israel, because we're such a small community and most of our, um, our materials and knowledge need to be acquired abroad, then sometimes we feel like a small isolated island. Uh, we need to invest far more time and money um, to um, obtain an education in conservation and also get the uh, proper materials that we need to use for our work. Um, the daily challenges in working in a museum is the hectic schedule of exhibitions and um, loans. Um, that we need to prepare the objects for. Um, but on the other hand, because we're such a small community, uh, it makes us uh, be more creative and find uh, solutions to different problems that arise during our work. Mm -hmm. 